Panda from Skyfire Audio. So I found a really cool video online of the making of the Techniques SL1200G turntable. As you know, that's one of my absolute favorites and our best seller at Skyfire Audio. Uh, I noticed that video didn't get a lot of views. It only had a few hundred views and it was published four years ago by Panasonic Australia. Thank you guys for making such a wonderful video. Uh, and as an homage, I thought I'd just sort of rebroadcast it and maybe talk over it and highlight some of the manufacturing. All right, looking at the first slide is, is already interesting. It says making of the new SL1200. Now they did not have the G uh, naming convention here. Not quite sure why, but uh, maybe they try to make more of a generic video that would apply to most turntables or most models from techniques. However, there's some pretty good evidence in the video as we see forward that it is in fact a G that's being produced or at least a lot of the components for it. Um, it's broken into several sections. Um, you know, the, the look, you know, outer cabinet, the BMC inserts, uh, the making of the platter, the making of the tone arm, uh, and the motor, uh, and some of the calibration. So we're going to go through all the sections little by little and pause the video at the right time. Starting with the rubber outer shell, uh, here you see a technician inserting the rubber into uh, a press. Uh, this is a mold for the lower component. Uh, it's heated up and uh, you can then see them a bit later re releasing this heavy outer mat from the from the mold. Now there's always some cleanup to be done after injection molding. Here you see a technician pulling some of the plugs that are kept in place for all the screw holes, etc. Now this outer um, piece has is, is been made this way for decades and decades and the G is no exception. And this thing is heavy, heavy rubber and contributes quite a bit to the dampening uh, abilities of the turntable. Uh, moving on to the BMC cabinet. Now the BMC cabinet is the inner sort of damping material. Here we see a technician uh, spraying the mold with some sort of release agent. Uh, then we see the mold uh, being raised into the injection machine and down comes the entire BMC inner structure. So this sits inside of an SL1200G, adding to its heavy, heavy weight. Remember the G weighs almost 40 pounds and this is a big part of it. Uh, a little further down the video, we see him. Uh, let's look at the complexity of this mold. Look at that thing. This is hardened steel and it's been machined. Uh, every part is made out of this. Uh, you can imagine the expense that goes into making just one of these molds. Um, you know, when I worked in manufacturing, the smallest molds that we made were tens of thousands of dollars. Um, and it was made by our highest quality machinists, the absolute top of the line of the machinists. Um, so just imagine the complexity, all the pins, the holes, the, the releasing uh, system for it. Uh, it's quite a unique die and, and very impressive. Uh, this is what I've uh, sort of maintained is like the complexity and the engineering that goes into an SL1200 is like very little. There are, there are very little contenders in the market that uh, are, are this good. All right, looking here, we see the uh, technician uh, cleaning the flashing from the BMC. Uh, this is not a precision part. This is just used to add dampening and weight. So he's cleaning sort of the flashing that comes out of an injection mold with a file. And soon after, we move on to the aluminum die cast platter. Now, this is um, a sort of poured uh, aluminum platter. You can see a technician inspecting, uh, doing a visual inspection after it comes out of uh, a machine. And it is inserted into a CNC um, lathe where it is probably trued up and balanced. Um, if you watch my other video that I did on the 1200G, which I'll link below, you can see the balancing holes at the underneath part of the platter where it is uh, balanced much like a tire would be a rim and a tire at a, at a balancing shop by um, removing material uh, from specific points to achieve that perfect sort of even balance. Um, here we see uh, another technician inspecting. Uh, here they're talking about the rigorous, rigorous quality checks. Uh, moving on to the next, and that we can see the three holes there uh, around the center shaft identify this as a 1200G platter that is screwed on in place. Unlike the earlier, the GR2s and the, and the 1500s, which is dropped into place, the 1200G is actually held in place by three screws. Um, it does have a rubberized coating on the bottom. I can't tell. It may already be there because it is black. So it looks like they've already applied that rubberized coating. And in the next little bit, we're going to see them um, check for trueness. This is um, very quickly, you can kind of see a probe um, 
probing the outside of the platter for accuracy. These are, you know, highly, highly technical probes that measure to tens of hundreds of thousands of, uh, of a millimeter. And then on the next slide, we see some sort of computer system that is illustrating the, uh, the trueness of the platter. Moving on to the brass weight. Now the platter does have a pretty heavy uh, top brass weight that goes on it. Here we see a technician inserting the blank uh, lug into a CNC milling machine, uh, which is going around. Uh, the fluid that you see uh, being dumped into the bit is actually cooling fluid. And here we see it uh, milling the outside diameter of the brass platter. Here is the finished product. There are the three telltale holes showing that it is in fact a 1200G that's being manufactured. Uh, now we move on to the high sensitivity tone arm. Here we see a bunch of tone arm um, mounting pieces. Uh, the two components, two metal components that make up a tone arm. Now the tone arms uh, throughout the Technique's SL1200 line are are almost identical with the exception of the G and the SL1000, which uh, use a magnesium toner. But overall, the design, the bearings, and the quality is, is the same throughout the entire lineup, which is really uh, speaks to what a great value uh, some of the entry level SL1500 and the 1200GR2s are because they use the toner that has been evolved for you know 60 plus years. Here in this next slide, we see a technician inspecting a tone arm wand. Um, you can see a really cool, uh, that whole machine uh, there with uh, levers is actually what holds it into place while they work on it. So this is a very specialized tooling. Uh, here we see him uh, using some sort of uh, press, uh, likely to be pressing the bearings, the, the high quality bearings into the pivots of the tone arm. Yeah, we see that right here, delicately. Uh, here they're claiming 149 parts go into making of a SL1200 tone arm. That's pretty crazy. Most manufacturers, if they break 10, 15 parts, that's that's a lot. And then we here we see them soldering the connections, the wires that carry the signal from the tone arm to the back plate of the turntable. All right, here we see some fine adjustments. There he is adjusting the uh, damping lever for raising the tone arm. And again, another sign of the 1200G, you can see the RCA jacks uh, that are part of the entire tone arm assembly, which is really cool. Um, so you can see the red and the white uh, RCA jacks at the bottom and uh, testing the up and down motion. Now we move on to the cordless drive motor. Um, here we see, um, let me pause right here. Here we see a uh, solder bath, essentially. We, uh, we're looking at uh, three rotor windings um, that are being soldered and dropped into a soldered bath. Um, and a technician applying some sort of adhesive. Now this is interesting, 30 motors per day. I'm not sure if this is still accurate or not. Um, you know, these turntables are incredibly high demand and uh, we sell them before we've even received them. Um, we often will take pre-orders on the SL1200G and, uh, you know, usually three, four, five, six weeks later, we get the next batch, which are all pre-sold to clients. We calibrate, install the proper cartridge and off they go. And this might be part of the issue. Uh, very, very high demand and some limited manufacturing, 30 motors per day is what they were claiming four years ago at this Japanese manufacturing plant. It may be higher at this point, but I know it's not <laughs> super high because uh, we can't seem to get enough of these pieces. Um, here we see the, uh, part of the motor assembly. We can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight coil windings. Um, and uh, I think this technician is soldering uh, the coil windings to probably some sort of control board uh, here we see them uh, putting some screws and now we're seeing the entire motor assembly come to fruition. We see a, a die cast basket uh, and we do see the two rotors, the upper and the lower rotor, which differentiates the G from the other single rotor motors. So here it is being tested because I can see a wire, a harness hooked up to it. 
Um, so it's probably being tested for continuity on the coil windings, accuracy of rotation, et cetera, et cetera. All right, here, uh, once again, we're checking with a micrometer the trueness of the motor uh, assembly. Uh, you can see he's got an analog caliper that is touching, essentially probing the top surface for trueness uh, to make sure this is part of quality control at uh, just about every machining and manufacturing. All right, moving on, uh, we've got the completed motor assemblies. You can see six or eight of them in, uh, in view along with uh, PC boards that allow the connections. Uh, moving on to the next bit, here we see the assembly. Um, and this is super interesting. So that is the brass uh, top plate being inserted onto or mated to the platter itself. He seems to be using some sort of suction cups to, uh, <laughs> to allow proper movement. And uh, once again, we are balancing the machine. Um, that is a machine. This is what I referred to earlier. Uh, this is a machine that's checking for trueness for the entire assembly. Before they were sort of balancing just the sub platter. Now that they've got the entire assembly, they've got rubber, brass, aluminum casting all in one place. This machine is checking for trueness and making removing material from certain areas to get the perfect balance going. Um, final and delicate balancing. Um, I see some more tone arm activity here. And now the final assembly. Now this is pretty cool. Um, here on top of the four blue posts, you can see the thick uh, 10 millimeter solid aluminum top platter of an SL1200G. To the right, you see the BMC insert. Um, and this technician is essentially not this one, but the second person right here. I see what's going on here. So we see the 10 millimeters below, then we see the chassis of the unit, uh, which is cast aluminum where the circuit boards are being attached. Um, and that constitutes the fourth layer of a 1200G. Very quickly, you see them drop in the BMC piece. Uh, the bottom cover seems to be on it. They're dropping in the top platter, the cover, and this is cool. Uh, this technician is measuring the accuracy of where the dust cover is sitting within the, the top plate. Uh, another piece of quality control. That's pretty cool. All right here we see another technician uh, painstakingly uh, inspecting the, the top platter as well for accuracy. And here we see a finished product. Um, you see the machined aluminum feet at the bottom see the rubber housing and the 10 millimeter top plate. And now they're testing with an actual record, which is really impressive uh, that they go through that. Technician making some notes. Here we see some equipment. Now the below the monitor, I think that's gonna be a wall on flutter meter that checks for accuracy, speed accuracy of rotation. Below is a distortion analyzer, maybe a Panasonic piece, which makes sense consider this is being manufactured by Panasonic. Don't know what the piece below it is with the uh, six little buttons, but pretty cool. Uh, I see they've got a automated system for testing these things. Got a barcode scanner there and uh, a green light, red light uh, for pass and fail. Very common in manufacturing. All right, here we see um, visual inspection. Uh, this is more like a, a car body shop where you've got some light strips uh, horizontally are actually vertically mounted to give the proper lighting so you can do a really good visual inspection on both the acrylic cover and the surfaces of the of the turntable. Uh, it's got a very high quality finish on it, so that was the sort of last bit of inspection. Here we see the machine introduced into its foam packing, and uh, that wraps it up. Rediscover music techniques. All right, if you enjoyed this video, um, i really love to, to hear from you. I'd love to get some feedback. If you could give it a thumbs up, it would really mean a lot. And of course, you know, do visit skyfiaudio.com or give us a call if you wanna talk about this model or any other techniques model. One last thing, uh, here at SkyFi, we sell the entire techniques lineup. And um, if you are considering or if you're in the market for a turntable, please do consider us. Uh, we're a small shop located in New Jersey. Uh, we put a lot of love and care into setting these up. We've got an amazing 12 point calibration process. We're super familiar with what cartridges work well with the techniques turntables. So please do visit and give us a chance.